Hello fellas, if you haven't noticed, Parkside is pushing really hard on expanding its range of power tools. This here is another addition, the all new Parkside Performance Rechargeable Battery Backpack. The idea is pretty simple, instead of inserting the battery or batteries directly to the power tool and then carry their weight during the operation you're doing, sewing, cutting or drilling, you can insert them in the backpack, you can insert four of them, carry the backpack on your back and then power the tool you're using with one of these extension cords. And believe me, carrying two additional kilos in your hand is quite different from carrying them on your back. The backpack in its full glory, the weight without batteries is 3.7 kilos. Inside, the user can find the extension cords I was talking about. The top cover is spring driven, but Parkside implemented one really simple support. If you use your imagination, you see how much the backpack resembles an instrument briefcase really clever from Parkside. The cable going out from the backpack is equipped with a bayonet connector. It's really thick. Inside are four wires, each 2.5 square millimeters. The extension cord for powering a single battery power tool. You can rotate the cable to almost full 360 degrees. The bayonet connector is super easy to operate. And by the way, it looks really tough. The extension cord for power tools requiring two batteries share similar design. Again, we can rotate the cable in virtually any direction. The backpack is equipped with a convenient stand. You can leave it in an upright position. On top of it, we have a convenient handle. On the back, there's a latch for removing the shoulder straps. And now it looks even more like an instrument's briefcase. The shoulder straps are well manufactured with really soft lining. The right one is equipped with cable clips, really convenient. The lining facing your back is also really soft and made from breathing materials. You can secure the backpack clipping the shoulder straps together and you can additionally secure the backpack strapping it through your waist. Let's return to the more interesting part. Inside the backpack we have slots for four batteries. We can insert even the biggest Parkside produces, the 12 amps hour. Probably you saw that the battery slots are labeled A1, A2, B1, B2. That's due to the design of the control board inside. According to that labeling, the backpack is equipped with four battery level indicators and a membrane on-off button. If you're planning to use the extension cord for 40 volts power tools, you have to insert at least two batteries in the backpack. The first one in one of the two A slots and the second in one of the two B slots. If you're using the extension cord for powering 20 volts power tools and you have only one battery, it simply doesn't matter in which one of the four slots you insert it. If you insert four batteries, all of them will be connected in parallel. For example, if you insert four 12 amps hour batteries, you end up with a total capacity of 48 amps hour. Few simple tests, a single battery in the A1 slot using the extension cord for 40 volts power tools. No voltage on the first adapter, 20 volts on the second. Two batteries, one in the A1, one in the A2, the same cord. Again, no voltage on the first adapter. Twenty volts on the second. One battery in the A1 and one battery in the B2 slot. 20 volts on the first adapter and 20 volts on the second. B1 and B2. Twenty volts on the first adapter and zero volts on the second. The extension cord for twenty volts power tools, a battery in A1, A2, B1, and B2. 
Later I will disassemble the machine so I can better explain you why it's acting like this. If you insert four 12 amps hour batteries into the backpack and use it to power a 20 volts power tool, you can virtually run it for days. That's a total capacity of 48 amps hour. Using the backpack to power 40 volts power tools is even more beneficial. You won't need to carry in hand the weight of the two heavy batteries. Your hands won't get tired so fast. Of course, in this configuration, the maximum battery capacity is only 24 amps hour. The cables of the backpack are long enough. You can place it and remove it from your back without putting a strain on the cables. You can easily get rid of the loose cables by using the cable clips on the shoulder straps. The backpack is really comfortable, it can be really well secured and I can barely feel its weight loaded with two 4 amps hour and two 8 amps hour batteries. It's finally time to look inside, starting with the adapters and I have to say I'm quite disappointed from Parkside. Take a look how terribly this thing is designed due to the rotation in the adapter. Those cables will eventually snap. The soldering points will snap. And not only you lose connectivity, but you might short circuit the cables. Absolutely awful design. Pay attention how the cables are twisting. All of this should have been done with some sort of a sliding contact, but definitely not by twisting cables. This over here is the resistor used for battery identification. When you open the backpack, you find one really big and relatively sophisticated control board. The board consists of two identical parts. You can now see how battery slots A1 and A2 are connected in parallel. Same goes for battery slots B1 and B2. Again, connected in parallel. The output of each battery slot is going through two MOSFETs, eight MOSFETs in total, which can be activated and deactivated under command from the control board. Inserting batteries into the backpack won't give you voltage on the output cable until you press the on off button, which sends a signal to the control board to activate the MOSFETs. Each battery slot is equipped with a current sensing shunt resistor if the control board is not reading power consumption on any of the battery slots, it will automatically shut off the backpack after some time. I'm sure you saw it, the two identical parts of the control board are equipped with fuses similar to those in the non-smart Parkside batteries. Like I said, the battery slots are paralleled 2 by 2 and they're having output points on the opposite side. Of the control board. On the underside of the control board we have only radiators for the MOSFETs. You can see the four output cables. If you're using the extension cord for 40 volts power tools, the first adapter is powered by the first set of battery slots connected in parallel. The second adapter is powered by the second set of battery slots also connected in parallel. If you're using the extension cord for 20 volts power tools, the configuration in the backpack is the same. It's the same all the way to the first bayonet connector. However, in the second bayonet connector, the pins are connected in parallel 2x2, two two, meaning that all four batteries are connected in parallel. By the way, now you can get even better understanding how stupid this design is. Let me prove it to you. The backpack is on. The probe of the multimeter is in the minus terminal of the first adapter. The probe is in the minus terminal of the second adapter. Same test, but this time with the extension cord for 20 volts power tools. If you switch off the backpack, the MOSFETs will also be switched off.
Well guys, I think I managed to cover everything about this product. The idea is really great, but connecting batteries in parallel has some drawbacks, especially if they are different. It's advisable the four batteries you use to be identical, equally charged and equally aged. But so much for now, in the near future I am planning to make a separate video testing this baby. So stay tuned, bye guys and see you soon.